Hi everyone and welcome to the video on VSEPR, that is valence shell electron pair repulsion, and this covers sections 9.1 and 9.2 in your book. So to start off with VSEPR, we're going to focus on molecular shapes. That is essentially what the VSEPR theory describes. So the shape of a molecule plays a very important role in its reactivity. By noting the number of bonding and non-bonding electron pairs, we can actually predict the shape of the molecule. And some shapes of molecules react differently than others due to the lone pairs, which are the non-bonding electrons. So what determines the shape of a molecule? Well, basically electron pairs. Um, whether they are bonding, which means they're within a bond, or non-bonding, which are the lone pairs, um, any electrons repel each other. Okay, because they're both negative. So by assuming that the electron pairs are placed as far apart as possible, we can predict the shape. So the reason that electron pairs try to get as far apart as possible is because they are all negative, and negative repels. So first we're going to focus on these electron domains. So we refer to electron pairs as electron domains. Essentially, this is wherever we can find electrons. It's a region where electrons can be located. So for example, we're focusing on the central atom A. We have electrons to the left, electrons above, electrons to the right, and electrons below. That's actually four electron domains. So in a double or triple bond, all electrons shared are on the same side, so they just count as one. So lone pairs, single bonds, and multiple bonds all count as one electron domain. It's a region in which electrons can be found. So again, the central atom has four. So what the VSEPR theory says is that the best arrangement of a given number of electron domains is one that minimizes the repulsion among them. So the best shape is based on the minimum repulsion. So electron domain geometries are our basic shapes. So when we focus on electron domains, again, we're just focusing on regions of electrons. So if we have two electron domains, it's linear. If we have three, it's trigonal planar. Four is tetrahedral. Five is trigonal bipyramidal. And six is octahedral. So again, this is just focusing on the regions of electrons around the central atom. And these are our general shapes, right? These are the general shapes, and every other shape is derived from one of these. So to determine the electron domain geometry, we need to count the number of electron domains in the Lewis structure. And the geometry will correspond to the number of electron domains. So with NH3, we have one, two, three, four electron domains around nitrogen, so it's tetrahedral. Okay, but the electron domain geometry is often not the shape of the molecule. Now sometimes it is, but often it's not the shape. So the molecular geometry is just defined by the positions of only the atoms in the molecule, not the lone pairs. So for instance, notice ammonia we have NH3, but we have this lone pair up here. So the electron domain geometry is tetrahedral, but the molecular geometry is actually trigonal pyramidal because these lone pairs push down on the hydrogen atoms to minimize repulsion, and so the molecular geometry is different from the electron domain. So within each electron domain, there is usually more than one molecular geometry. So we're going to start with tetrahedral, we can take one of the atoms away, we get trigonal pyramidal. We take another atom away, it's bent. So notice that from tetrahedral, we can actually derive different shapes. And we're going to focus on this in class. So in the linear electron domain, we only have a linear geometry, right? Because we can't take one of these away and it change shapes. If we take one of these away, it's still linear. Okay, so if there are only two atoms in the molecule, the, mon the molecule is linear no matter what. So if you only have two atoms, it's always linear. Okay, then next we have the trigonal planar electron domain. So we have three electron domains around, okay, that's trigonal planar, but we can get two different molecular geometries from this. 
If we have three bonding, zero non-bonding, that's still trigonal planar. But if we take one of these atoms away, it turns into, this says bent, but we are changing this to angular. Okay, ang sorry, this handwriting is awful on here. Angular. Okay, so we're actually going to distinguish between bent and angular. Um, angular is derived from trigonal planar, bent is going to be derived from tetrahedral. So again, we have two possibilities of molecular geometries from the one electron domain geometry. It, so as we talk about these non-bonding pairs and bond angle, um, non-bonding pairs, those are your lone pairs of electrons. Typically they're larger than non-bonding pairs, and so they actually will push down on atoms significantly more. Okay, so their repulsions are greater, which decreases um, the bond angles. Okay, and then double and triple bonds. Um, those place greater electron density on one side. So in this molecule, this CO double bond actually has a higher electron density, which actually will push these chlorine atoms together a little bit more than the distance from the oxygen to the chlorine, just because of the extra electron density. So going back to the tetrahedral, okay, we have four zero, right? That's the tetrahedral electron domain, which is also tetrahedral molecular geometry, right? Four bonding, zero non-bonding. That means we have all atoms. If we take one away, we have three bonding domains, one non-bonding, that's trigonal pyramidal, two and two, this is bent. Okay, so there are three molecular geometries that are derived from the tetrahedral electron domain geometry. And then we have the trigonal bipyramidal electron domain. Now it's important to distinguish between the two positions within a trigonal bipyramidal. We have the axial, so think about it like an axis, okay, the axial positions, and then the equatorial. Think about like the equator. Okay, so we have these two distinct positions in the trigonal bipyramidal, and it's important to know the difference because that is actually dependent on where we take electrons from. So lower energy conformations result from having non-bonding electron pairs in equatorial because they are further from these atoms, right? We want to minimize repulsion, so we want it to have the larger bond angle. So it's actually lower energy to start taking out of the equatorial before the axial. So there are four molecular geometries that are derived from the trigonal bipyramidal electron domain geometry. If it's 5-0, 5 bonding, 0 non-bonding, that's trigonal bipyramidal. If it's 4-1, okay, so we take one of the equatorial positions away and create a lone pair, that's seesaw. 3-2 is T-shaped, and 2-3 is linear. So these are the four different molecular geometries that are derived from the one trigonal bipyramidal electron domain. And finally, we have octahedral. So all positions are equivalent in the octahedral. These all have 90 degree bond angles, so it actually doesn't matter where we remove them from. So we have 6-0, that's octahedral still, 5-1, so we take one of the atoms away, that creates a square pyramidal shape. And then 4-2, so remember we have to take electrons away essentially opposite each other to create the minimum repulsion. So we take these two away and we create a square planar shape. So these are your three molecular geometries. And that is it for this video, just reviewing shapes. Um, tomorrow in class, we're actually going to look at um, essentially deriving these shapes. We're going to look at balloons. We're going to pop some balloons. Um, and then we'll also talk about bond angles and hybridization.